care of business, the special edition this time round, we're talking about the review of 2021 and our just released end of year property market report. So we've got lots of data and statistics to go through today. And I'm joined by the big guy, big guy. CEO Lewis Alsop. Hey. Six foot five CEO. There's he's, not many around, is there? He's a big guy, very big guy. <laughs> so purpose of the report for anybody that's watching, listening is we collect all the data and we do this every single year. It's data that Alsop and Alsop have. And this looks at sold data, transactional data, checks for properties. Really gives anybody from a, a client down to the press a bit of an insight into what's actually happening. Because sometimes you can read these reports and I see people read reports about the whole of Dubai and it doesn't really give it a, a true understanding of what's happening. So when we give our data, it's very much off the floor. Yeah. So 2021, um, obviously we're in 2022 today, but in 2021, the review that we're giving, give me some interesting facts that I would like to know and the people listening and watching would like to know. So throughout the year, we've seen different news stories about property prices increasing. Um, I can probably liken the property price prices last year throughout the year. It was a little bit like a roller coaster where things didn't go up like this. And if you listen to podcasts, I'm going on a diagonal, upwards diagonal yeah. uh, shape. Basically, it was up and down. So it's very seasonal. But over the course of last year, some interesting bit, bits of information was the average property price for a villa or a townhouse for sale increased by 780,000 dirhams, which is about 150,000 pounds. So which is place no, to be as a homeowner? Yeah, no small number. Um, apartments actually increased 450,000 dirhams on average over the course of the year. So about 100,000 pounds, 90,000 pounds per Obviously, property. when you are doing this, if you do own an apartment that is worth 500,000 dirhams, it doesn't mean that your, your apartment is now worth 900,000? 900, 900, yeah. right it, this it? is an average based on the total number of transactions we've done. Um, but on average last year, we've seen an increase of that, and I'll talk through percentages in a moment. Um, what's also quite notable is rental prices. Rental yeah. prices last year for an apartment or for a townhouse or a villa, we've seen an increase of 40,000 dirhams per property last year, which is about 8,000 pounds per property. Now, that's very hard to tell. If you're living in a property and you keep renewing, you don't see the new true value. So this is this is what happens is that landlords don't really understand what their true value is until either someone tells them or it becomes empty and the agent lets them know what it's worth. And I think that that's what's happening a lot in the market is that tenants are deciding to stay in the houses. So it's, it's dragging the true value of the rental. So there's only so much landlord could put the price up in value, isn't there? Yeah. And then 6,000 uh, dirhams increase, about a thousand pound increase on apartment rentals. That's for last year. What that relates to in property price um, in, in, in terms of increases, we've seen a 24% increase uh, on villas and, uh, villas and townhouses last year on average throughout the course of the year. And again, in Dubai, you have different communities that will, will, will uh, perform slightly differently. And then apartments, which seen a 32% increase across the whole of the city. So in summary, if you are a homeowner, you are in a good place for capital appreciation. You have made money last year. What have you done? If you don't own a house though, and you're, you are renting, people assume that homeowners maybe will celebrate when the market goes up. But the reality is as a homeowner, I know this myself, when your house goes up in value, you're not selling it. So it's like, it's great, but you don't actually see the cash unless you refinance it. So. It's always good to be in positive equity, but like I think a lot of people sit, think people are sitting there with like sitting on bags of cash now, but it's not the case. You just like stocks and shares, you know, market goes up and down. We see cycles here. And realistically, I say to everyone in Dubai, if you have a medium to long term view, then that's probably the most sensible out um, most sensible view on things. But the things with the marketplace is that it doesn't really matter if prices go up until you sell. Correct. If you're down. not on the ladder and the prices are going up, yeah, it's nearly I, impossible for well, you to get we on We had a management meeting this morning about people talking about, oh, well, let's wait for the prices to come down. And realistically, we'll talk about 2021, but and we'll talk about what 2022 might hold. I don't see prices going down this no. year in 2022. No, I agree. Um, so if you were to describe the 2021 property market in a song, what song would it be? A song? Uh, can it be an old or new one? It's an old one. And I think you'd probably lean towards Roland Keating. Life is a roller coaster, it. just it's a banger, gotta it. find it. Ride it, it's not find it. Oh, no. it's, it's ride the roller coaster. You're a Ronan Keating fan club? I, I am a massive run. I've got the Irish accent that goes, if tomorrow never comes. Oh God, please stop. 
<laughs> okay. Um, we talk about resi though, so what about commercial mortgages, which are other departments you've got all up and all up? How do they perform? The commercial specifically is, is a very difficult market to define because I'm speaking to the head of commercial and one of the things that commercial market lacks at the moment is the ability to be able to c- confirm what the recently sold transactions were. So in Dubai, you have uh, data now and data points from Property Finder and Hauser.com and other portals that give you recent transactions. When you're dealing with commercial, it's very hard to do. What we've noticed is that we're working with a lot of landlords that are buying properties and then renovating them and putting them back on the market and they're seeing a massive increase on the reselling them. So we've got a lot of investors that are working on the books of that. So the market is definitely on the so increase. So prime offices, good locations, good views are very much in demand. What I translate in, in transactions last year for us, commercial transactions up 42%. Does that surprise you? Not really. We're considering businesses the year before probably went through one of their worst years ever. Yes, if you ask, if you say it like that, of course, you go, oh my God, I'm going to be surprised. But you have to look at a couple of factors, which we'll discuss later on. What has Dubai done? You know, now you have 100% business ownership. There is so many more businesses in 2021 that have opened up. Yes, businesses have closed down. But someone said this to me that was, um, he, he runs the malls in Dubai. And uh, I said, oh, you see all these shops that are closed down? And he laughed and went, yeah, he said, I get it. He said, shops do close down. He said, but do you know what? He said, new businesses will open up as well. And that's what I think that's really supported the commercial sector is that Dubai is becoming the hub. It's becoming the hub for the world. It's not just for uh, people that live in Dubai. I think there's a tax-free haven, which obviously is no we'll longer tax-free. We'll talk about, we'll that talk about that later on. But it's that place now where people want to come and work and want to place, place their businesses. So am I surprised? No, because of the new rules and regulations that Dubai have been, put in place, such as the 100% business ownership. Mortgage transactions, though, something that does not surprise me, 43% increase up from 2020. So um, what we've noticed is huge appetite for people to kind of be more deep rooted into Dubai. Yep. Uh, our mortgage team has been absolutely inundated this year, as have lots of banks Banks doing mortgages. I think you know the market for mortgages is going to be busy when you speak to your neighbour and your neighbour's talking about how they can buy their next home and sell their current home. And, you know, they always say that, you know, be wary of the investment when your neighbour's talking about it. And I think <laughs> we're in that stage at the moment where everyone's getting on the property. I know the amount of messages I have from people who I'm distantly close to in friendship terms and saying, can you help me with the mortgage? Yeah. So it just shows that the the intent is that, I mean, Dubai is so different to five years ago, 10 years ago, Dubai now, people that move here don't have a two year plan. They now own a house and when they own a house here, and I've seen this firsthand, people are going back to England, including me, I went back to England at Christmas and I come back and went, wow, I really appreciate Dubai. And I thought that was just me. But then speaking to the directors and business people, they were saying the same thing. They were going to Liverpool, London, Coventry, obviously, this is always Coventry is Coventry. Yeah. But a lot of people now appreciate what Dubai is. And I think a lot of people have got long-term roots here. And that's what the mortgage will create, a 25-year long-term route for you. Definitely. Re- uh, residential lettings transactions, uh, people renting properties in Dubai, up 15% versus 2020. So again, we have seen a recovery of people leaving the country because of COVID, return, yeah. Um, so really healthy numbers there. Don't forget when you're talking about new transactions, how many people have just decided to renew because the price has gone up, which we talked about. So, you know, if you, why would you move on? If you can legally stay in your property and not have to move or pay another 25% more, you kind of stay. So it, the, the, the numbers make sense in the increase in market. Brings us nicely on to how people have been buying properties and renting properties in 2020. So last year, 60% of our transactions came from people buying a property with a mortgage. Yeah. So that kind of correlates with the huge spike in people uh, taking mortgages out for all sudden, all sudden 40% with cash. Yeah. Um, tenants, so in Dubai, if you're not listening to this from within Dubai, you have to, when you rent a property, you place multiples of checks down for modes of payment to rent a property over a 12 month period. So last year, 29% of people made um, their rental purchase or rental uh, deposit of one check. So they paid their rent for the year up front. So a third of people last year paid for their check, check up, up front. Um, 24% of people, two checks. So basically made two payments throughout the course of the year. And then the, the vast majority, just 47% of people renting a property for all seven months last year, rented a property with three or more checks throughout the course of the year. And I think we're starting to see that 
more often now, people having a bit more flexibility in paying more frequently. I forecast that in 2022, 23, 24, the direct debits are going to come in. I think one of the main factors to that is that they're creating laws at the moment, such as what we can talk about later, taxation and the decriminalization of checks. So checks for me are probably one of the most dated things in Dubai. And I think one of the most dangerous things for anyone looking to make a scam at the moment. I'm sure everyone's seen the holiday home scam that come out. Yeah, we talked, where about, we talked about it a few weeks ago. People putting checks down for renting from landlord for four checks and then collecting the check for one check. There is a dangerous element there. And I think that with decriminalizing the checks, the next angle is going to be how you turn uh, payments into digital payments. Yeah. So decriminalizing checks, just want to jump on that very quickly whilst we're going through the check process. Yeah. What happened with the Dubai courts and what happened with the laws in Dubai regarding that? Uh, so previously, if you had bounced a check for any value, it was basically a criminal offence. Correct. Um, and now a new law was passed back in the last year where, I can't remember the value, was it t- up to 200,000 dirhams? I think it was 100,000 to start with and you, you can get like, a, I think it's a 2,000 dirham penalty is what you get. But what, I mean, what used to happen, so everyone's understanding, if you bounce a check of 5,000 dirhams, 1,000 pounds, yeah. you would get a call from the police station yeah. to say, you've bounced this check, either you come here or we're pretty much gonna come to you. Yeah. And people would be like, oh my gosh. Anywhere else in the world, that is not a normal way to work. You know, a financial, uh, obligation between two parties in agreement and then you can go to the court and sort it out but like yeah I think the world went not I think the way the world is going with Dubai is a lot more of the of the modern modern approach which was taking checks away and potentially going down the direct debit route so decriminalizing check which happened in 2021 was a massive step towards making the UAE and Dubai property making market. people feel comfortable conducting business here but yeah, yeah. Check, you know you don't you, don't, you don't, wouldn't feel comfortable with you know, uh, criminal offences for checks. You know, it's not normal. So we would, we would not write a check out unless we absolutely had to, because it's just two things. It's a pain in the ass, and you know, you don't want to put your your name there with a check because the check is a legal guarantee, isn't it? Yeah. Um, circling back to our report, so what, what? It's not actually all ups from last year on property report. We had a couple of um, uh, decreases in some of our activities. So actually, the number of properties coming to market both for sale and for rent was down versus 2020. Yeah. What would you put that down to? Because that's interesting. Supply and demand. Um, I think you've just got to look at it like this. Properties are coming online and they are selling before the hit of the internet. So this leads perfectly onto notable sales. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go through some notable sales with you, which will lead on to what we're talking about. So we've got here some uh, some commercial, some residential transactions that we've done. So I'm going to give you some ideas of notable transactions. So some higher end stuff in Jamiro Golf States, we sort of five bedroom in Wildflower for uh, 30,500,000, which was um, an off market listing, meaning that never came onto the internet. Every one of these transactions you're talking about never reached the internet. You're still in my thunder, oh, are you? Sorry. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying to you. Palm Coutier, a three bedroom apartment with over 20 million, 750,000. Uh, sold that property without coming to the internet. Redwood Avenue, 23 million, six bedroom, came on, didn't hit the internet. Commercial Index Tower, 39 million, 830,000, sold it without coming to the internet. So people want to talk about the trend in Dubai. The trend is when the market's hot, in which it's going up, there's a pool of buyers here. And these pool of buyers are saying, as soon as you think a property is coming available, you call me. Yeah. So it's not the transactions are not happening. What's happening is we're taking a property on to come live and we're already selling it or so renting the, it. The, the, the transactions happen too quickly before it even gets, goes onto the internet, which has resulted in listings being down Correct. last year. And that has a, you know, that, that shows that obviously portals are great, but working with a brokerage or a known brokerage has a, a pool of buyers already in place. It shows that actually the majority of the larger transactions were not even involved in Hausa or Bayut or any of the other larger portals, Property Fund, that they've gone directly through the agency, which is, uh, it shows the strength of the market for the demand. Definitely. Top uh, buyer and tenant nationalities. Na- nationality. So we record here at Allsup and Allsup the nationalities of people that buy and rent through it. So top five, British, Indian, French, Canadian, Lebanese. Surprise you? No, I think I think a lot of British people have always come to Allsop and Allsop because we are British. I think that's just a comfort factor that we have. 
Um, but one thing that I did see this year, did you say there's a European company or country on there? Uh, French and Canadian. French and Canadian. And in sales, I think you've got, uh, there's two European countries for the first time ever, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, British and French is the first time ever in top buyer nationalities we've ever had two European countries yeah. in the top four. Yeah. Now, what that says to me, uh, to us, uh, it yeah. coincides with the narrative that start the year. A lot of people uh, escaping their home countries for lockdowns, coming here. What we did find is a lot of the Europeans were actually responsible for the higher end property price purchases. They were coming with some, you know, some big investments they were making. People that are living in Monaco and then coming to buy in Dubai. Dubai becomes actually quite an affordable place to live compared Definitely. to some of these places. Definitely. Okay, so I mean, 2021 all around very positive reading, and you know, kind of leads us on to really what 22 2022 look like because i think before we talk about what 2022 looks like i think there's some notable points that i want to bring up on what changed in dubai which also had a knock-on effect to yeah. to this so first of all uh co-living with the opposite sex so tell us what life was like before the rule change and the rule change in 2021 to say that you can now co-live with the opposite sex. Oh, up until last year, unless you're married, you could not live with the opposite sex. So, you know, many parts of the world, obviously we are in a Muslim country, many parts of the world, you may have a partner, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Um, and you, you know, can you can live together basically. But the th thing, it, it, if you put it in the truth terms, there are a lot of people that were living together, but we had the fear of, oh my gosh, this, what do we do? You know, how do we, what happens if we get caught? And I think that Dubai's new law has brought into place that, okay, this is a modern culture that we're in. Uh, obviously people need to get to know each other and do whatever they're gonna do, or they might just be two friends living in a place. Um, so having that co-living is really, I think, easy. E yeah. Because you see it, you see it in the news in England, people say, oh, you can't hold hands or you can't live together. And I think we're just, they're trying to create and understand that Dubai is an accepting, accept, accept, accepting yeah. city to live in. Um, so that was one massive thing that come out, 100% business ownership. So that was probably one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest bits of news really for anyone who's a business owner. Yeah, so pr years previous, up until recently, to own a property in Dubai. No, a business. Own a business, sorry, own a business in Dubai, you had to have a local Emirati sponsor you or the business to be able to own a business. So essentially they would be the owner of the company. And then you would take POA for the business. Yeah, so you effectively, could. even on paper, you don't own the business, yeah. you have POA for it. So that law recently changed and, uh, you know, every business in Dubai pretty much took full ownership of their business. I think one of the first companies to ever do it was actually Apple. Yeah, Apple were coming to Dubai. This is years ago, and I remember the story coming out saying that they wanted to come, but they wouldn't come because they would not give their, their brand or logo or their business to an, to an Emirati or to anyone to sponsor the business. And they were the first company ever, to my knowledge, that were uh, the first business to be non-local. Non so that moved into transition of the business in Dubai. Um, and then the final one we've got here that I want to discuss, and also a very big one that has really pushed the property market is digital signatures and how they have now, hooray, I know, come into effect and they now have this, hold the same weight and authority in the courts as uh, a normal signature from a piece of paper. Give me just a very oh, it breakdown. blows my mind that, you, that up, up until last year, you still had to print something sign it, scan it, and send it back. Or sometimes go and meet them. I'm going to meet them. I'm just thinking, what the world we are in now, particularly in my UK side of the business, I don't remember the last time I physically put a wet signature on something. Yeah. Everything is used, whether it's DocuSign, Adobe Sign, do, uh, signable. So it's a digitally adopted signature, and that is now recognized in the UAE. So where would we use this in our day-to-day, -day for anyone that's watching? So if there's someone listing their property with us? So were you listing a property with us for sale? Uh, whether you're signing a legal contract to buy or sell a property. So we would effectively, just so I understand that for everyone else that's watching this, you want to sell your house, we would create a digital PDF, yep. we would send it to them, yep. and they would digitally sign it on there and send it back and instantly get that. So they would type in their name, it would adopt the signature, and basically it's all timestamped to say, Carl Alsop has signed this document on this time, on this day and has agreed that this is his adopted signature. And security-wise, for anyone who doesn't understand digital signatures, it takes the IP address, where they're located, so ever dispute, you can see exactly what phone it's come from, what laptop it's come from, yep. so you can actually see the authentication behind it. All plays a part in Dubai's uh, goal of being paperless. And we have pretty much accomplished that in most parts of our business where 
We don't like paper. We prefer everything to be done remotely via the digital signature. We do it for job offers, employment contracts. My diary is digital. I, li- I literally write it in my notes and my notes converts to my phone and everything else and you can tick it off. It's a lot easier. It's pretty incredible considering last couple of years we've had some of the, all, the, all these changes come in for the positive. Yeah, definitely. And, that, and uh, that leads us on to 2022. There's been some quite important announcements in the first couple of weeks. We, all, we touched on a few weeks ago about the working week changing from went from Monday to Friday now, uh, rather right, than Sunday yeah. to Thursday. Yeah. Which gives you roast dinners on Sunday. Roast dinners on Sunday, yeah, we talked about that. Really so important. big up to Ready Roast, if you're watching. Ready Roast is the number one roast dinner delivery company in Dubai. You can get a roast dinner Yorkshire pudding with gravy and beef sent to your doorstep. Or my wife who cook it for me. No That's one knows really your good. wife. Not, 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 not for me though. They all come to your house yeah. now. Watch Excuse this. me. <laughs> Um, so last week, actually, they announced gaming, changing laws for gaming to be allowed in mm. Ras Al Khaimah. Yeah. Well, you want to elaborate a little bit on that? So we have to be very careful when we talk about this terminology gaming at the moment. So to give everyone an understanding of Xboxes what's happened. Xboxes everywhere. Yeah, Xboxes <laughs> and ping pong. Um, so in Dubai, if anyone has noticed over the last four or five years, there's been a lot of well-known gaming um, hotels come to Dubai. So things like... Um, Caesar's Palace. Caesar's Palace obviously have the Atlantis they're launching the MGM the Aria are currently all under construction in Dubai um, there are many other well known gaming uh, hotels <laughs> you're finding it's hard aren't you <laughs> <laughs> gaming hotels that are, that are landing in Dubai anyway Ras Al Khaimah have announced officially they have coming to Ras Al Khaimah on the Al Marjan Island the hotel name is uh, the Win. The so Wynn. famous synonymous in Las Vegas if anyone's mm. been. So the win is where we actually stay when we go. So that's how we went, this win and Encore, which yeah. are two hotels. And they have lots of together. gaming tables. Lots of it? gaming t- tables, yeah, table yeah. tennis. <laughs> so they have lots of gaming. But what we found with um, what, what's happened, Rasa came it's been a major development with it. So the minute that the win was announced, it wasn't just, oh, this is what we're doing and it's gaming. They announced it and they automatically and announced that they're putting the uh, regulator in place. And part of that regulation is not just this is the, how you do it. There's also financial regulations in place as well, down to uh, money laundering, anti-regulation. So you can see that the wording that we're using, it's going to be a gaming yeah. uh, hotel. So where the knock-on effect that is for Dubai, Rasa can be very exciting, and I'm sure that's good. that's 2026, so they're looking to hand that over. Dubai already has the capabilities to be able to, at some point if they want to, press the button of these hotels. Now, if or when that happens, we don't know. But with this new regulator put in place for all of the authority of gaming, I'm expecting some exciting news in the next couple of years, if others will likely follow. It's going to be good for tourism. Well, think about this. You're going to bring people from Vegas. Yeah. And, you know, if you look at what Dubai's done, they've took the shopping industry, they've pretty much got that. They've got the tourists and the beaches, etc. Yeah. They've tried to get the, the Florida market with uh, MGM, and yeah, yeah. What, which has been a disaster, to be honest. If you go there, it's uh, all the shops are closed down because the footfall isn't there. Must try better. Must try better. But love the rides. It's yeah, very yeah. good for the kids, but not enough people go there. Now they're trying to pull the, industry, the tourism from there. So where will it affect Dubai? Tourists, definitely. More tourists, definitely. But sec- uh, thirdly, um, more people spending money in country. I think there'll be a taxation on it as well, of some sort of fee to go and do gaming in Dubai. So there's gonna, it's only going to affect positively the economy. Last thing today, huge news announced yesterday, and big uproar, positive or negatively. There is now an introduction for corporation tax for the UAE, effective. 1st of June 2023 or whenever your new financial year starts so if you're working calendar year you could kick in 1st of January 2024 corporation tax or something we're used to from the UK yes what does that mean to everybody are you getting paid tax on your personal earnings that's none of your business Um, so corporation tax, I think what the important thing to address that they've really stressed when they put it out on social media, this does not affect real estate investments, it does not affect salaried employees, and it does not affect dividends for anyone that owning a business. Mm. Where it does affect you is they take a percentage, which is 9% of your net profits from your profits, which would be taxable earnings, meaning that effectively Dubai is now a taxable city, which is a major, major stepping stone. 
good or bad, how you take it. Let's take the bad. The bad for me is as a business owner, there's 9% of your net profit coming out going towards taxation. That's the bad. There's no way to hide away from that. The good, what is that 9% going to bring to Dubai? That 9% of everybody's taxable earnings, what do you see for your point of view? Where do you think that money is going to be? I still think it is still the cheapest place to conduct business in the Middle East in terms of taxation um, compared to the US and UK. US, you're looking at 21%, UK 19% corporation tax. So it's still significantly cheaper to do business here. Um, and the reality is, is that it was going to come at some point, any economy relies on tax. Yeah. And like the VAT, whilst at the time that was a shock, you just adapt. I yeah. think all businesses will adapt accordingly. Okay, here's a question for you then. How do you adapt? If you're a business, so I have an idea how I think we will adapt. How do you think a general business person to buy that has a small to medium business? We're talking, you know, n nothing crazy. They're, they're looking at this saying, oh my God, 9% of more. Because it's a hammer blow for some people. Won't make no mistake, this taxation will cost, forget the, ta the tax payable, it will cost every single business and business owner more money because you're having to pay more resources on either increasing headcount for accountancy, accountants in your business, yep. or getting a tax expert in to go through consultancy and advice in your business. One way or another, you need more resources to ensure that you are able to file and pay your taxes on time because it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a big job to ensure that everything is done, paid in, right. paid out. I mean, we have it. I mean, every quarter we we, we are notified that our tax is due. For VAT, yeah. It gets set, uh, sorry, our VAT, which is tax. Yeah. Let's work out. Our VAT uh, has been, is due. We have to get the accountants in. We have to have make sure the audit's done every year. You have to have the tax expert. And there is a cost on this. We've got a VAT expert that works in our business. We even have an anti-money laundering officer working in our business. Yeah. And these cost to a business yes it's definitely become more um expensive to run a business now the question mark that i think a lot of people are going to ask is what's going to happen to the fees so for instance when you renew your trade license at the moment there is astronomical fees to run that what's going to happen so with the fees we run a business in the uk once you have a registered trade name you don't have to keep renewing it every single year in the uae every single year you have to renew your trade license i would hope speculating here that if we're paying tax yearly that we're not having to pay tax plus quite expensive fees to renew our trade license let's see we don't know on that one i think the last thing i'd say on vat vat on corporation tax from my point of view is i think you're going to see a lot more bigger companies start to map out how they're spending their money as in rather than just say let's go how much money can we make it will be okay how much are our expenses what are we expensing? you know like in the us or uk you have expense credit cards you you're told to put your petrol through you're told to put your meals with your business partners through because that comes as a taxable uh, deduction doesn't it yes so i think there's going to be a lot more thought process given onto that in terms of how do you make it efficient to run um, your business it's become quite serious running the business now, isn't it? We literally just said that. We said we've gone from having loads of lads and girls in the office making money and being this real estate company five, six, seven, eight years ago to now anti money laundering, corporation data, pri tax, data, data privacy. privacy laws coming in the summer. So, but Dubai is in a very house. It makes place. all these changes makes Dubai globally a more credible place to do business, which I agree. I'm very excited about. And I think we're in for a good 2022. Yes. Thank you, guys. Bye. Cheers.